everyone. Okay, so we all know what's happening at the end of the month. House of Queen and Shadow. No, House of Flame and Shadow. House of Flame and Shadow is coming out, which is so soon. It's literally two weeks. So I thought we could do a list of all the connections that I could find between the three series. And I made a list, I wrote it down because I'm prepared. Everything that I could find, everything that I could um, get to some extent. We're gonna go through them quite quickly because um, there's many. But these are not theories, these are like actual connections. This is actually what is in all three or like at least two of the series or all three of the series. So let's start. You will know the Bryce works at Jaseba's secret library underneath the antique shop and in this library there's literally like the craziest books and two books that get mentioned in House of um, Earth and Blood are literally the Book of Breathing which is literally the book in Akutar that you know the two ends of the book that Amrin was trying to translate that had to, linked with the cauldron and stuff and The Walking Dead which gets mentioned in Throne of Glass. So that's like a very obvious connection between the three series. So we have that, and I think that's kind of like a big deal in my head. Um, maybe not. Second one is the word marks. The word marks get mentioned in pretty much every single one of the books. Um, Danica talks about them, is studying them. Obviously, Aileen mentions them a lot. Vera draws them, so like word marks word marks next one is the gates so bryce obviously spending like a whole time trying to open these gates and travel through worlds using the horn literally in her back she is the horn and obviously we know that alien literally uses all of her powers like literally she runs out of power to close these gates in between worlds are they the same gates? I don't know. I'm so confused. Next one is my favorite, I think. It's a very obvious connection. Like, it's like a written. Is Aileen in chapter 99, I believe, of Kingdom of Ash. When she's falling through the world. And I love the memes. Have you ever seen the memes of, like, her falling through the world? Please tell me you've watched that. She obviously meets Farah and Reese. So, at the time, a court of silver flames was now. And we saw that she was talking about a pregnant lady, a pregnant girl. So we didn't know she was pregnant yet. And then she, Aileen spoiled it for us. Iconic. When she falls through, she sees Lunathian as well. Aileen sees Prithian and Lunathian. That's an obvious connection. <coughs> <coughs> Apologies to Asia of the future that has to edit me coughing. No problem. I'm so sorry, girl. Um, the next one is such an interesting one. It's the connection between Rune, Reese, maybe Asriel? I don't know, but everyone uses shadows. Everyone uses shadows. Rune and Reese can mind speak. And Bryce, when she meets Vera and Reese at the end of House of Sky and Breath, when we all freaked out and screamed and went absolutely mental, she sees Reese and is like, oh, Rune! Because they look exactly the same. So, is that a connection? Are Reese and Rune connected somehow? Because I don't think Sergio Mas would mention the fact that they look so similar for nothing. Like, that has to be something. Like, Bryce literally confuses Reese for her brother. Surely. And they both have, like, a similar power. They can mind speak. They can, um, they use shadows. I don't know. The next one is still with Reese, but with someone else that I don't like. And I'm scared of this. But the connection between Reese and Maeve. Reese and Maeve both get described saying this. Violet eyes with starlight in them. Surely they're not linked. Please no. But yeah, apparently they have the same eyes. And Maeve has the same fucking shadow thing going on as well. And can mind speak. Oh my god. I know from here there's gonna be a lot of theories of like, is Reese bad? Is he vague? <laughs> Please no. Next one is another one that connects all three of them is the eight pointed stars. So 
eight pointed stars appear in every single one of the series. So in Crescent City, Bryce has one scarred into her chest. In um, Throne of Glass, the priestesses have it in their forehead. And in A Court of Silver Flames, Cassian and Nesta make a bargain and the bargain tattoo is an eight point star. I don't know if that has any connections between each other, but the eight point stars is in every single one. Another one that it's an obvious one is Hell. Hell is in every single series. Hell gets talked about in a very similar way. You know, like going to hell to find an army for Bryce or there's this thing that is hell that you can go to. Is it the same hell for all three of them? Who fucking knows? Another obvious one is face. So there's face in every single one of them and they're very similar looking face. The pointy ears, the wings for some of them. Oh, the next one is a good one. Okay, the star sword. Please tell me you know what I'm talking about. So in Crescent City, a star sword gets mentioned and in Throne of Glass, a starlight dagger. And then in A Court of Silver Flames, Nessa is like creating three weapons, ataraxia or something, another sword and a dagger that end up with different people. So could it be that this is Az's knife that is the truth teller and Gwydion, the star sword, the trifecta thing, the star sword, Az's dagger, the truth teller, they, you know, the thing that if they're reunited finally, I think that's a big one. The next one is very silly and I noticed it and I just want to mention it, but I don't think it's important. The Autumn King, um, Bryce's dad and Reason both have a planetarium like sculpture thing in their respective um, studies. Maybe they have the same interior design um, style. <laughs> maybe not, maybe it has some sort of connection i don't know but i noticed that both of them have this planetarium thing this one is a it's a bit of a theory one okay not it's not like a full-on connection but you know Daglin in a court of silver flames in chapter 55 they talk about the Daglin thing and they say the Daglin they ruled for a millennia and enslaved us and the humans that sounds like the asteroid to me that sounds like the Asteri to me. Or maybe the Asteri, the Volg, and the Ducklin. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Next one is Amrin and Fury. Now, there's this theory. This is a theory. This is not a connection. That Amrin might be the seventh missing Asteri. Because we don't fucking know what Amrin is. We just know that the motherfucker is old. She's like, oh, she's old. Yeah, but what? what is she? Old. Yeah, but like, what does she do? She's old. We don't know what she is. We just know that she is old. Maybe she's just as old as the Asteri. And there's a seventh missing Asteri. But we know that what Amrin, like, human body looks like. And that's very similar to Fury. And Fury as well, we don't know what she is. We just don't know what they are, either of them. But they look similar. Next! Reese's beast form is a word hound, which gets mentioned in Throne of Glass. So is this a connection? Also, talking about beast forms, the shapeshifter theory that, you know, Tamlin is a shapeshifter, technically Reese too. And then obviously, Faze in Throne of Glass, not all of them, but some of them can shift into an animal. For example, Rowan, Fenris gets a wolf, you know what I mean? Like, so are they all shapeshifters? Are they all connected? Who knows? This is a good one. So Lanthis, 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 I don't know how to pronounce. In a Court of Silver Flames, bled black, just like Maeve in Throne of Glass. The next one, the Weaver in a Court of Silver Flames, no, in a Court of Frost and Starlight, um, wove threads, just like Maeve's handmaidens. This is a very loose connection, but we noticed it, why not mention it? We're on it, we're on a roll. Next connection is the Under King. The Under King gets described with milky white big eyes and large teeth. The same exact way has the best character in the Akatar series, the Surreal. Mm -hmm. Carried the whole plot on his back the whole time. And motherfucker was spilling hot tea the whole time and he knew shit. He gets described physically like the Under King. Love this connection. 
Lydia, my baby, I love her so much. Looks very similar to Aileen and has very similar fire powers. Are they the same? Are they connected? Are they somehow from this? I don't know. But they both have similar powers, similar height, similar blonde hair, similar eyes, I believe. Oh, this is a good one. Nesta has claws like the iron teeth in Throne of Glass. Now, this has nothing to do with this theory or this connection. I would do anything in my power. I would do anything to see Manon and Nesta meet. Really, this is just a video of me manifesting that the, the crossover is not just Crescent City and Akutar, but it's Throne of Glass as well, because I would do anything to see Manon and Nesta. I know they would meet. They would hate each other and then fucking be best friends. I know that. I know that for a fact. So, you know, around the Asteris Palace in Crescent City, House of Sky and Breath, the Asteris Palace, around it, there were olive groves. That's the same as um, in Tower of Dawn, around Irene's um, city. Maybe it's just olives, you know what I mean? This is another color, eye color thing, but Bryce and Helion gets described with the same exact eye color. <sighs> I love this connection. So, Tamlin in Akatar has an emerald ring. Lydia in Crescent City has a ruby ring. And we know the best couple in the SJM universe, Rowan and Aileen, have respectively the two rings, the ruby ring and the emerald ring, the exchange rings, and that's their rings. It's very odd that they could have had any kind of rings and then they mentioned the same exact two. Just saying, this is another one that I noticed. So, um, the three-faced goddess. So, the witches in House of Sky and Breath, so in Crescent City, they uh, worship the three-faced goddess. Same thing as the witches in Throne of Glass. They're loyal to the three-faced goddess. This is my favorite one, I'm going to have to admit. This is really a manifestation video for me to have my baby Aelin. I need more of Aelin, I need more of Rowan, I need more of the Throne of Glass universe, and I really hope this crossover involves them. And I think the biggest, like, connection is that the next book is called, I don't fucking know, House of Flame and Shadow. And in Kingdom of Ash, is it Kingdom of Ash? Somewhere in Throne of Glass, Aileen literally is called the Queen of Flame and Shadow. If that's not a sign that she's in this, I don't know what that is. In my head, that means that my baby Aileen is here. Queen of Flame and Shadow, House of Flame and Shadow. Surely. Why would you, like, why would you say that then? Sarah J Mass, it's not the kind of writer that writes something like that. Something, su such a strong connection and for no reason, like just to toy with us, probably she is, probably she is actually. That's all the connections that I could think of and that I could find. I know I went through them quite quickly, but I didn't want to talk about theories. I just wanted to talk about obvious connections that I found in the books, favorite books of all time. So if you have any more, please, for the love of God, let me know. Please write them in the comments because I wanna find as many connections as possible for when the next Crescent City book comes out. I'm so stressed. I'm not gonna lie to you. I am so stressed about this book. It's insane how stressed I am about Ink on Paper because this is stressing me out on a daily basis. It's my Roman Empire. I think about it every day. I want this crossover so bad, but at the same time, I don't want it. I don't want it if that means that not all of them come out of it unscathed, fine, happy, and healthy, and good. Like, I want the Throne of Glass characters in it but they've been through too much. Come along, save everyone's ass, be a badass, leave. With Rowan, with everyone she loves, with the lead and Lorcan and Adian. You know what, if someone has to die, Adian can go. Like, I want her to be happy and her loved ones to be happy and healthy and alive. I want everyone to come out of it alive. Farrah needs to be fine, Nyx needs to be fine, Reese needs to be fine, Cassian and Nessa, they need to, Asriel, Gwen, 
they need to be fine. Elaine can go. But I just need Aileen to be fine. I need all of them to be fine. I need I need this to be... Oh, I'm stressed. I've been waiting for two years. Two years ago, I read that fucking line. Oh, hi, my name is Reese. And, like, my world shifted. And what the fuck? Sarah, thank you so much for hanging out with me and for listening to me talking shit about my favorite books and all the connections that I could find between them. If you have any more that I somehow missed, please let me know write them in the comments and so I, I we can talk because i don't have i only have two friends that i've read all three of them so i can only speak to two people about these connections please please talk to me if you read all of them let's be friends let's add each other on goodreads and instagram and tiktok everything is in my bio my amazon storefront my amazon wish list goodreads my Pinterest, Instagram, TikTok, everything is in my bio. I just got a message from Emily. Oh my God, this is so funny. She's going through her reread and she's like, oh my God, I forgot that Cormac died. Like at first I was like, who's Cormac? And then it was like, oh yeah, I remember Cormac. And then it's like, well, Cormac is dead, RIP. <laughs> that made me laugh. But anyway, thank you so much for watching. And I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope I could freshen up your memory about some connections between the three series and if you have more please let me know and write them all in the comments i love you and i promise i'm gonna post weekly here so if you want to subscribe so you can watch my next video i wouldn't mind if you want to like this video as well um that'd be great and i love you have the best day ciao